Welcome to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the show to hear how you can access the full interview and get related links. And now it's time for Carrie McCoy to get all up in your business. Thank you, Tim. You know, last week we had a caller call in, and he was so nice. He gave us kudos about how much he loves the show and he listens to the show. And last week was crazy. We had a videographer in here. We had three, three cameras going. We had, of course, the audio going. It was hot as Hades in here. Oh, so hot. So it was hectic. And I don't know if I gave that caller the the gratitude that I should give him for calling in and giving me the compliments on the show. So if you're listening, caller, from last week, thank you for calling in and giving us a little vote of confidence. We all need that, don't we? Absolutely. So, like Tim said, I'm Carrie McCoy, and it's time for me to get up in your business. For the next hour, my guest, Rhett Tucker from Moses Tucker Real Estate, and his daughter, Catherine, award-winning filmmaker, and I will be getting up in the business of economic development and industry opportunities in Arkansas. We hope through our storytelling of how we maneuvered the path of independence and leadership in pursuit of our dreams that you will learn something, want to get involved, or be inspired to take action in your own life. And we'll be answering questions via phone and email. For me, it began over 40 years ago when I founded Arkansas Flag and Banner. During the last four decades, Arkansas Flag and Banner has grown and morphed from door-to-door -door sales to telemarketing to mail order and catalog sales and now relies heavily on the internet. Each change in sales strategy required a change in company thinking and procedures. My confidence, leadership knowledge, and my company grew. My initial $400 investment now produces nearly four million in annual sales. Each week on this show, you'll hear candid conversations between me and my guests about real world experiences on a variety of businesses and topics that I hope you'll find interesting. Starting and running a business or organization is like so many things. It takes persistence, perseverance, and patience. I worked part-time jobs for nine years before Arkansas Flag and Banner grew enough to support just me. It's now grown so much that to operate efficiently, we require 10 departments and 25 people to maintain them, thus reminding us all again that small businesses are the fuel of our economic engine. Before we start, I want to introduce my technician, Tim Bowen, who will be running the board and taking your phone calls. Say hello, Tim. Hello, Tim. My guests today are fifth and sixth generation Arkansans, Rhett and Catherine Tucker. Catherine, do you go by Tucker Mayhem? Or Catherine just Tucker. Just Catherine Tucker. My son is Tucker Mayhem. But Tucker is his first name. I was going to say, that's his name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's his real name. That's how we solve that problem. Okay, good. Uh, Rhett is a certified public accountant, has a BS in commerce from Washington and Lee University in Virginia, an MBA from the University of Arkansas. For over three decades, Rhett has been a powerhouse in commercial real estate, brokering deals for both commercial and residential development in Arkansas. You would be hard-pressed not to find his company name, Moses Tucker Real Estate, on any number of construction sites in downtown Little Rock. His economic achievements and revitalization to downtown has won him numerous awards, both professionally and civilly. In addition, I'm excited to have joining us today his lovely daughter, Catherine Tucker. The nut doesn't fall far from the tree, as Catherine has proved to be successful and civic-minded in her own right. She is a high school graduate from the Historic Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, and graduated magna cum laude from the University of Pennsylvania with a BFA in photography. Her resume after college continues to impress by having worked on TV films such as, I was impressed with this, and this is only a few, Bones, Glee, Antiquities, that hasn't been released yet, has it? No, it hasn't. Okay. And now you're working on a documentary for the former governor, Mike Beebe. That's right. I love that. And if that is not enough, you recently signed on as the executive director for the startup Arkansas Cinema Society, whose mission is to build a film community in Arkansas where film lovers can watch films, share ideas, connect with each other, and nurture the new and existing film talent within our state. It is a pleasure to welcome to the table this community-minded powerhouse father-daughter team, Rhett and Catherine Tucker. Thanks. Thanks, Carrie. Thank you, Carrie. Good, good to be here. Yeah. So when I read you're both uh, longtime Arkansans, Rhett, 
I read a little bit about your father. Tell me about being a fifth generation Arkansan. Well, you know, we love Arkansas. Catherine and I both went out of state to college, but I always wanted to come back and particularly help Little Rock become a, a, a greater city. And so, I mean, my family's been involved. My, my grandfather was in the state legislature. My dad was a, a, on the school board in Little Rock. My son's in the state legislature. And so it's just kind of in our DNA to try to, to make the place a better place for people to live. I forgot about Clark. <laughs> oh, yeah, Clark Tucker. He could be our governor one day. He's got the makeup to do that. He's got the drive to do that. No comment. <laughs> Uh, so your f grandfather was in the legislature. Yes. Uh, my great-grandfather was governor and a U.S. senator, and that was on my mom's side, and my grandfather on my father's side was uh, was in the state legislature. So what was your mother's maiden name? A Williams. And he was the governor? He was the governor? No. My mom's uh, grandfather, grandfather was the governor, James P. Clark, oh. and was U.S. senator around the turn of the century. Wow. You, have they written a history book about your family and how you got here? Did, you come, did they come down the Arkansas River? No history book that I know of, and there are probably some few horse thieves in there, too, that, I, that I'm not telling you about. <laughs> <laughs> so, Catherine, did you feel any pressure when you were in Central High School and you were going to graduate and you thought, oh, my gosh, I'm a sixth-generation family of these successful people? Did you feel the pressure? Uh, I felt the pressure to get out of here for a little bit and then come back and sort of bring the the whole hero's journey you go out and learn something new and bring it home to your community and that I felt not necessarily pressure but I felt I just feel an obligation to do that did you always want to be in film uh I wanted to be a photographer but I think part of the reason I've formed the Arkansas Cinema Society with Jeff is I think I would have known I wanted to do film if I had been exposed to it earlier and Photography was what I was exposed to, was able to be exposed to here. And so that's what I got into, and that's what I went to school for. Um, and then the second I found film, I knew instantly that's what I wanted to do. This, the first time I went to a film set, I knew that's where I needed to be. What year did you graduate from high school? 96. So in 96, there was not any film opportunities in Little Rock? Um none that i knew of yeah and and jeff and i both have commented on Who's that jeff and jeff nichols is okay. the co-founder of the arkansas cinema society with me and he um was the writer director of loving and mud and he was a year behind me in high school we were in plays together at second presbyterian and the arkansas art center and so we sort of got into theater and then i kind of got into photography and if you combine those two that's film um, but I, I just didn't feel any outlet for film when I was living here. And I, I, the opportunities are so much better than they used to be, but we want to make them even better for, for young people. Hasn't somebody else already tried to start an organization like this? When, didn't they try to start this not too long ago and get some tax credits for the, uh, by the legislature and it f kind of fell through? I don't know. Didn't uh, Carrie, Carrie, an, uh, a producer, a uh, Carrie Elder? Yeah. Didn't she try to I'm do something? I'm not sure if there was anything exactly like this. Ah. Oh, you'll have to explain to me what the difference yeah. is. Well, I'm not 100% I'm not sure what, sh what she did. Um, she had a production company, mm -hmm. um, and, which I have also. But this, this nonprofit right now is really more about educating youth, exposing the community to filmmakers from outside the state, and giving our kids. Arkansan filmmakers a place to screen their films and a way to meet one another. And you want it to be a statewide. That's why it's called the Arkansas That's Cinema. That's right. You don't want it to just yeah. be the Little Rock because there's the Little Rock Film Festival. Right. But that doesn't really... The Little Rock Film Festival had a really nice run for 10 years with the organizers of it. Uh, a couple of years ago, kind of let it go. They were busy elsewhere in their career and they, they could not continue it so they needed to make money in their life yeah probably so and they're, they're they're doing a great job so that's you know we a group of people started meeting after the demise of the little rock film festival to see you know how that void could be filled and it has evolved into the arkansas cinema society really taking on a different mission entirely from what the little rock film festival had largely because of jeff nichols direction and 
inspiration. But, because the Little Rock Film Festival wasn't really about making films. It was about reviewing films, right? It was really just about screening films. Watching them. Yeah, and the, the difference between what a, tr- a traditional film festival does and what we're doing is there's submissions. For, for a traditional festival, there's thousands of submissions. There's people watching those films and, and uh, accepting them into their, to screen at their festival. We are a curated festival, much like Ebert Fest, which is sort of our design. Um, but we're also year round, so we're going to do programming and screenings year round, not just. Ooh, you got your work cut out yeah. for you. Okay, Rhett, you and Jimmy Moses have been a huge part of the success of the revitalization of downtown Little Rock. How in the world did you get the cojones to start this huge project 25 years ago? Easy answer. Many, many, many partners. A whole lot of people have been involved in this from lenders to investors to people who've bought homes to restaurateurs to retailers to city government. Uh, a lot of partners have, have made. But not local. in the beginning. In the beginning, somebody had to go. How did it all begin? Did you go to the city and say. Well, let me take you back. Okay. Uh, most of the 20th century, Little Rock turned its back on the river. When I was growing up in Little Rock in the 50s and 60s, what we had on the river was the uh, county jail and the uh, A. Tenenbaum scrap metal dealer and then the Chris and Shaver uh, gravel operation. So that was your riverfront. And uh, so uh, actually started talking about a riverfront park in the late 70s and 80s. And then in the early 90s, uh, they put together a long-range planning uh, process for the city. The, the city, the, the, I guess the city leaders did. but Mayor Daly or somebody? Mayor Daly. There were about 300 people involved on like 12 task forces to, to look at the city's future. And one of the primary uh, goals to come out of that was to reclaim the riverfront. And so that was kind of the beginning of, of the River Market District. And, you know, we had to hire the requisite uh, expert from Philadelphia to come in and tell us, give us some good ideas. And one of the best things he told us was take everything you can find that works and is movable and put it in the same area so that you begin to build some critical mass and, and some synergy. So we had a pretty good farmer's market in the base of the parking deck at 6th and Scott. You had an old uh, history museum in MacArthur Park. And once you'd seen the, the, the sole mummy they had there, you, you know, that was probably about all you needed to go for. So that was moved down into the River Market District. It's now the Museum of Discovery. Now, wait, there's a mummy in the, in the, the river? The, the, no, there was a mummy in the other. Uh, I'm sure it's in their archive somewhere. They, they had a mummy. No, I'd like to see that. All right. But now yeah. Kelly Bass runs the Museum of Discovery, and he's just done a fantastic job with that. We also persuaded Bobby Roberts to move the main branch of the public library into what was the old Phones Brothers warehouse and is now their flagship and now part of a uh, three- or four-building campus down there. So they're a major anchor. About that time, we had a president uh, elected from the state of Arkansas, and he, he had a decision to make about where to put his presidential library. And so uh, Georgetown wanted it, Yale wanted it, Hope wanted it, Hot Springs wanted it, Little Rock wanted it. And we, we told him, President Clinton, you need to come to Little Rock, be part of something bigger. Many of the existing presidential libraries are in either isolated or remote areas that are really not part of anything else. Even Kennedy's in Boston, which is a major metropolitan area, you have to take the subway and then get on a bus to get out to that point that it's on. Uh, they say cab drivers in Atlanta really don't even know where the Carter Library is. And so, and so President Clinton said, I agree, I, w- I want to I put it in Little Rock. About 50 different sites all over central Arkansas were submitted. We said, come, come be part of what we're trying to do down here. As a result, it's only the second presidential library that's at an interstate exit. And it's the only one that's within walking distance of the city's major hotels and convention center. So in November of 1997, he committed to, to put the library down here. And that, that, was, that was a huge commitment for us because it ultimately brought the Heifer headquarters adjacent to it, and it spawned a lot of other developments. So 
when I talk about there being many partners, I'm, I'm telling the truth. And all the way from the President of the United States to Mary Beth Ringgold, who put the copper grill uh, in the 303rd Tower 10 years ago. She'd had great success with Capers and Cajun's Wharf. She said, I want to do something downtown. That's just an example. And I know you've had the Bruno brothers on here too. A 65-year-old business, been in three or four locations in Little Rock, shut down in, in West Little Rock, and were really just down for about two years. And both Gio and Vinny told me, we cannot go to the grocery store without somebody saying, when are you going to reopen? So they were, they were kind of the first ones to jump and, and say, we'll, we'll go on Main Street. And so it takes some other visionary people who buy into the dream, and now they've got a, you can't get in there. You cannot get in it's there. It's like Yogi Berra said, nobody goes there, it's too crowded. <laughs> and so they're, they're another good example of, of, of people that. But all of that came after you guys did the planning in the 70s and decided to start well, making changes. It, the, the, big, the big plans really started in the 90s after that future Little Rock planning process. How, how did you get involved, you personally? Was it because you were in real estate already? I, I was already in real estate, and I uh, believe and love Little Rock. And I thought that's where maybe the private sector could make the biggest difference. In 1990, I was looking for property to put Arkansas flag and banner downtown. And everywhere I went, Jimmy Moses, and I guess you too, Rhett, had just made a bid on the property. That's how I ended up where I am now. Because every one of those on 2nd Street, I'd go, this is a good one for a flag stop. And I'd go in there and go, Jimmy Moses just made a bid on this. I was like, golly, who is this guy, Jimmy Moses? <laughs> good for you and good for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it worked out perfectly. Yeah, it worked out for everybody. Because my the building I bought was inexpensive and beautiful. I can't even imagine that. Yeah, you had a documentary made by Gabe Mahan about by your Catherine's building. Catherine's husband. Yeah, mm -hmm. nominated for four regional Emmys, I might Gabe might just ask. told me that this yeah. week. Mm -hmm. I, I've got to go online and find out how that is. We keep it in the family. You really do. <laughs> so did you use low income housing tax credits? I just watched a thing on TV. We, about we, we that. have not done that. We have extensively used historic tax credits when we can, when we can take a building that's on the historic register and we can rehabilitate it and bring it back to its original grandeur, then we, we, we use historic tax credits. But did you sell them? Uh, yes and no. Uh, I'll tell you about our biggest project where we combined historic tax credits and a, another federal program called New Market Tax Credits. It's the project we did at 4th at and Main called, called The Man that is a, a typical of us is a mixed-use project. It includes Samantha's uh, restaurant and Bruno's, uh, state office buildings in the old uh, Blast department store. The uh, architect was Woodrow Mann, who's also the architect for the state capitol. So we call the project the Man Project, and uh, and then above Bruno's are 19 loft apartments. Then we built a parking deck in the back to kind of accommodate everybody. So are they full? Absolutely, been full since the day they opened. When did they open? Uh, four years ago in June. Wow. The Man lofts, and so now you know now you see Main Street is, is coming alive. And they Soulfish has been open a year. And now across the street, uh, that's the 300 block of Maine, uh, Tommy Lasseter and his uh, team are going to put two restaurants in uh, what's called the old Rose Building, that uh, ornate two-story building. That's not in the, the Rose Law Firm. No, not the Rose Law Firm. It's, it's called the Rose Building. And then at long last, really, the K-Lofts Project, which is 30 loft apartments, across the, literally across the street from Bruno's, is being completed, and, and the leasing will start there in September. Are there enough people to want all this housing? You know, that's, that's a great question, because when you see a developer come to Maumelle or Chenal or Bowman Road, they're putting up 300 apartments in, in 18 buildings. We've done 36 here, 19 there. Our first project was the Tough Nut Lofts in 1999, was 23 apartments. So we've not really flooded the market. We're getting ready to open the Clayton on Scott, which is between 9th and 10th. It's 47 units. And uh, uh, occupancy will take place in September. We've already leased a bunch of them. So uh, because of the way we've rolled out the supply, we've not oversupplied the market. And there's, what, what's the one down across, uh, across from the bus station? Is that yours? Yes, we'll, uh, we've got two across from the bus station. One's called MacArthur Commons, kind of in honor of MacArthur Park. How many is that? 
That is 59. It's been open about three years. I was going to say, that's a pretty big, that seems like your biggest it's one. 50, it is, so far it is. And then uh, Legion Row, which is across Capitol Avenue from the bus station, and behind where the new bowling alley is going that, that we're doing, called Dust Bowl, eight-lane bowling alley, with a full bar and restaurant. And then across the alley from it will be Fassler Hall, a German beer hall. Are you scared to death you're going to go bankrupt with one bad step? We're, we've gone too far now. We can't worry about that anymore. You are rolling the bowling alley. You are rolling the bones on these. A bowling alley downtown. Of course, everybody loves to bowl. Now, hey, I, I, I love I'm, to bowl. I'm much more cautious than my partner. This bowling alley is going to be huge. And I think I read something else you were putting in downtown. Oh, theater, a movie theater. Did I read you were putting in a movie no, that's theater? That's her. That's you, Catherine? <laughs> Not yet. But I think your future, dad hopefully. will but, be yeah. helping you. But with but, that. but next month, uh, th- I know a real estate guy. Yes. Th- threefold Noodles is going to open next month in the 600 block of Maine. Do they make a gluten-free noodle in there. Yeah, they're outstanding. I've heard that. And uh, and we put eight loft apartments in that uh, old building. Did uh, historic tax credits on it. So it sounds to me like you have you you've got more than just a few apartments downtown. It sounds yeah. like you've got hundreds. And don't you have yeah. some condos that you can sell? That you said, didn't you sell a bunch of condos also? We did. We, we, from a developer end, we have 11 condos left to sell. And so we, we are looking to sell those out. But, yeah, we've built about 300 condos. So there are 300 homeowners in the River Market District. That makes a difference, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. big difference. Do you ever see an end? No. Not in the near future. He, what, do you, what do you see for the future of downtown? Well, I love the tech park. And I think the Little Rock's kind of getting on the tech train. And uh, job growth is just so important to any city, as is leadership. Uh, the cities that do well uh, have dynamic leadership, both business and elected, and they have dynamic growing businesses. And so I think the Little Rock Technology Park is a great addition. I think they're doing good things. Charles Morgan's got two high-tech companies in the Museum Center, one a Nuvo, the other called Privacy Star. And uh, they have about 100 employees. Uh, what does your day consist of, Rhett? What time do you get up, go to work? I'm not an early riser, but really? I'll stay as late as I need to. Your wife stays up late, too, I just have to Yeah, we're, 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 not, um, we're not morning people. So you, you go to work, and what do you do? Meetings all day long, putting people together you know, all I, day long? I'd rather, really rather be doing things than sitting in meetings. Meetings are necessary. A friend of mine said there should never be any meeting longer than an hour. I agree I'd with that. I'd probably cut that back. But but in any event, no, every every day is a little different. I need to tell the listeners that, oh, have we got a caller? This is Up <laughs> In Your Business. I'm here with Catherine and Rhett Tucker. Have you got a question for us? Yes, good afternoon. Hey, is it true what I heard earlier that Clark might be running for governor? <laughs> <laughs> is this Clark? <laughs> yeah. Who puts you up to this? <laughs> I asked him what to say about things like that, and he, he said he's keeping all options open. <laughs> Well, I'd say it would be great if he would. Uh, you are ray of sunshine on the horizon. You well, are not kidding. Thank you very much. Thank you. No, ma'am, I'm not. Thank you. Thanks for we'll, calling. We'll tell his mother. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> She's got to be proud. Um, I think it's funny to the callers to know when you were talking about your meeting only being an hour long that during the last break, uh, Rhett said, how long is this? And looked at his watch. And I said, an hour? And he was like, oh, I can do that, I guess. <laughs> Yeah, you are. <laughs> That's right. It is meeting rule. It really is. So uh, what do you think the key factor is to your success downtown? I mean, there's got to be something. Oh, we've tried to build quality projects, and we think the mixed use is very important. The, the, what they call the 24-hour community used to be the old joke downtown was the last guy out at 5 p.m. Would you flip out the light? Yeah. And so now we have people coming home at 5 p.m. And do you we live have, downtown? I do not. <gasps> Interesting. I've owned a condo downtown. I, I currently live been living in the same house for 31 years. So can't pry him out with a sti- with no, a pr- pr- crowbar or dynamite. So. Yeah. But but I I do have some investments downtown. Yeah, and you shop downtown. I shop downtown, eat downtown all the time, lunch work and downtown. dinner, work downtown. Um, you're going. You've opened in Fayetteville. Why? Well, dynamic part of the state and. Uh, we had a real opportunity to open an office up there, and uh, it's been about 18 months ago. It's gone gone very well. As, as you know, the very dynamic economy up there, growing like crazy, and just probably a good place to have a real estate office. Yeah, are you building condos and or apartments? No, up there? we we uh, we manage quite a bit of property, and then we bought a, a 
an older building just off the square in Fayetteville that we're completely renovating and leasing it and uh, excited about that. Are they going to put any, do they have any rules about how high these buildings can go? Because it seems like there's starting to be a lot of really tall, you know, apartments and condos. In the I, 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 well, I think it depends on where it is. I mean, you know, you've really got around the square. four or five communities that comprise Northwest Arkansas, and they mm-hmm. all have their different regulations. But around the square in Fayetteville, it seems like we're getting a lot of tall buildings around there. Is there anything, is there any limitations to that? I, yeah, I think you've got to get through the zoning process to get that accomplished. Mm-hmm. It, it does seem like a great opportunity. If I had any money, I'd be up there buying a, a property and building apartments, too. Cause yeah, there are a lot of apartments being built. Well, the uh, Arkansas Lottery has really put a lot of money into all the communities that have colleges right now, yeah. and they're all growing. Catherine, my child, you are a very impressive resume. We talked about it when we first came on. You're a filmmaker. You're magnum cum laude from your uh, Pennsylvania school. When it Pennsylvania, I said? Yeah, University of Pennsylvania. Yeah. Uh, and you have worked for TV, Bones and Glee. You have worked on films, Kill Bill, Gangs of New York, Frida, I love Frida, Chicago, and independent film, Loggerhead. And in Arkansas, you've worked on all, I think you were the producer or co-producer of All the Birds Have Flown South and yep. Antiquities, mm-hmm. which is yet to be released. And I haven't seen All the Birds Have Flown South because it's a serious drama. It's a serious drama. It's a psychological thriller is what we're calling it. Well, even... Bereft of humor. <laughs> yes, very. Uh, even her, even Joy Lauren Adams' sister told me it was hard to watch. It's hard to watch. Yeah, so... But everybody should see it. That's what everybody says. I'm going to make it's myself... Re- it's a really well done film. And, it, and, and Joy deserves an Oscar. Oh my God. Her performance was tremendous. That's what I've heard. All of the performances were so great. Everything was really well done. Yeah, they should. Y'all should be proud of yourself. And then Antiquities. Uh, who's the star in that? Uh, Andrew West is the lead uh, leading male, and Ashley Green is the leading lady. And uh, Arkansas and Mary Steenburgen has a guest appearance. I thought um, so. Kind of a cameo role. She was gracious enough to come do that for us. You know, we called her Mary Nail in high school. So whenever I see her, I just put the little dig in. Mary Nell. (laughs) (laughs) And and then I got another person that was on the radio with me was Rick St. Vincent. Oh, yeah. He was, he's uh, also on the board of the Dreamland Ballroom. Mm -hmm. And he was in it. He said it was going to be a great film. So when are you going to release that one? Well, we are currently uh, submitting to festivals, uh, waiting to hear back from Toronto and Sundance. And then... Uh, possibly South by Southwest and of course you hope to get distribution at the festivals and if and when you get distribution then it'll go into theaters and you'll be able to see it. Well that's a long process. I don't understand that business at all. It takes forever. It does take forever. It seems like a joke that you would sell tell in a film would be no good five years later when it finally makes yeah. it to the people. You're like well that's old news. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Delayed punchline. Yeah. Very delayed. <laughs> uh, uh, and you're doing a documentary on the former governor Mike Beebe. I bet yes, he's ma'am. fun. Oh, so it's been a really, really fun documentary. Um, We're almost finished. We're just doing the score and the sound design, and as soon as it's ready, it'll be on AETN. I'm going to have him on the radio. Yeah, he is a great subject. The documentary was very easy because he is incredible on camera. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Um, So you're now, on on top of all this stuff you do, you are the executive director for the Arkansas Cinema Society. With Jeff Nichols. Yes. Adam Driver? Adam Driver is going to be one of our first guests um, on August 25th. He's, he'll be here. He's so, going to screen Patterson okay. and uh, The Force Awakens. Uh, Patterson at 2 p.m. on Friday and The Force Awakens at 7 p.m. on Friday. So can people get tickets still? The, it is curr- those two screenings are currently sold out to the public. We have uh, a hold on a few tickets that we're hoping to be able to release to the public mid next week. Um, but tickets are still available for Patty Cakes, which is uh, screening at 6.30 on Thursday, August 24th. And it was sort of the, uh, the Sundance sensation this year, and it's kind of a coup to be getting it um, uh, at this time, because it's gonna, it's gonna open nationally either the week before or the week right after our festival. Um, and the producer of it is coming 
And then also on Saturday, David Lowry is going to be here. He's a writer, director, and he's going to screen Pete's Dragon, which he wrote and directed at two, at two o'clock on Saturday and have a conversation with Jeff afterwards. And then at seven o'clock on Saturday, he's screening a ghost story, which opened this summer and it had rave reviews across the country. And he's also um, signed on to direct the next Disney movie, Peter Pan. So he's, he's How many a, times can they make Peter Pan? Not enough. It's my favorite. Oh, wow. Okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we've got a really, really fantastic lineup for this first event. I think I'm going to become a writer and come up with a new fairy tale storyline. Yeah. 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 Um, it's a good idea. I know. They keep just remaking everything. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Catherine, the mission statement of the Arkansas Cinema Society is to build a film community in Arkansas where film lovers can watch films, share ideas, connect with each other, and nurture the new and existing film talent within our state through increased exposure to filmmakers and their art. At the beginning of the show, you talked a little bit about why you and Jeff thinks this is important. Can you tell that story about photography and high school and one sure, more time? Sure, sure. So. Um, my own personal story is that I was interested in photography and theater growing up in Arkansas and I think if I had been exposed to film sooner I would have had a better idea sooner that that's what I wanted to do and I went to um, college for photography and minored in communications and took marketing and all of those things it's just all like filmmaking if you just put them in a blender um, and then I worked for a, a celebrity photographer when I moved to New York for the first year. And I, through him, uh, met some folks at Miramax, which was, you know, that's the place to be at that time. And um, went to work at Miramax and got on my first film set and just knew instantly that's what I wanted to do. Um, but Jeff has a different, a different journey, but, but similar in that he was also kind of deprived of the being exposed to the filmmaking world here in Arkansas and um, both of us just really want to uh, help increase the film community and build it not just the industry of it but the interest in it and c sort of bring cinema as an art form more into the community. You know I, I, I've learned this since I started this show a year ago that behind every great leader is a teacher and she just again just validated that I hear that over and over and over so you and Jeff somehow tied up met up with each other and started talking about this how did it how did it come to be well so we had the um, the when the Little Rock Film Festival shut its doors every, there were so many disappointed people myself included because much of my filmmaking career in Little Rock w is a result um, either primary or secondary of the Little Rock Film Festival and people that met there and you know my husband Gabe Mahan met Josh and Miles Miller and Daniel Campbell and they they've all been collaborators ever since and and so there's a, a real need for that kind of organization here and so when it closed its doors you know there's 30 of us kind of got together and said what do we do and how do we replace this? Um, and so we kind of met over a year or so, and then Jeff did his screening of Loving um, in November of last year, and we, I ran into him there, and we, he kind of asked what I was up to, and I said, you know, we're trying to get a festival going again here, and he said, well, let's not do a festival, let's do what the Austin Film Society has done in Austin. And so, it all happened really quickly. What I, is that? So what I, is what is the Austin Society? The Austin done? Film Society has been around for 30 years, and Richard Linkletter originally founded it. And it was kind of a bunch of filmmaker friends in their basement sharing movies, and then it kind of grew out of that into what it is today, which is a huge organization. It's a nonprofit that, that participates in all the different festivals. Um, Really, it will in definitely in Austin, but also in the state, but they offer grant programs. They have a studio. Um, they have their own theater. They do screenings weekly, monthly. They have host filmmakers. They have, I mean, it's, it's tremendous what they're doing. And um, I wish you'd do all of that in the Dreamland Ballroom. 
Wouldn't that be fun to have a little stage that that, that helps kids? And you know, I love kids and it helps kids in the Dreamland Ballroom. Of course, my stage is not very big. Yeah, I love the Dreamland Ballroom. It'd be great to do something there. I'd love for you to, but you know, we don't have an elevator. We could put one in. There you go. <laughs> but where are you going to put? Where are you going to put? Uh, where are you thinking about housing your organization? Well, right now, um, <laughs> we're roving from coffee shop to coffee shop on a daily basis, <laughs> saving quite a bit on uh, office space. Um, but we, you know, hope to house ourselves downtown Little Rock somewhere. Um, I bet your dad knows of a vacant place. I can help with that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, as we grow, I mean, we announced... Uh, our formation on March 23rd. And so it's been a, a steep uphill climb to just be ready for this first event in August. And really it's just kind of a taste of what we're planning on doing um, year round. So how did the event in August come to be? Well, a bunch of us kind of went out and did research and figured out that there's not a lot going on in August and it'd be a great time to have. That's because it's so hot. Right, but it's a great time to be in a movie theater. Oh, yeah. Right on. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it fits in well with the international film festival schedule. And so, you know, we're, although it's not a festival, we do, we, what we're planning on doing is doing these monthly screenings where we bring in a filmmaker and they screen a couple of films and talk about them after each of the films. We have a guest, a host, a kind of if we bring in a cinematographer, then maybe a cinematographer asks the questions. If we bring in, so it'll, we really want there to be a conversation about the film. Let me throw something in too. Sure. When, when the uh, Cinema Society was announced and then when this program that's coming up in two, week, two weeks was announced, okay. it got extensive coverage in LA and even nationwide. And the uh, Little Rock, can always use some good PR, but maybe particularly most recently with our crime and shootings, it's good to get some good PR for a change. And the announcement of the program was picked up by the Washington Post and Miami Herald, uh, really uh, paper newspapers all over the country. Why? What made it special? Jeff Nichols. Oh, yeah. And Mary Steenburgen's on our board. Uh, Governor Mike Beebe's on our board. Um, Kathy Webb, Vice Mayor's on our board. We've got some really heavy hitters on our board that are wanting this to be t to succeed and happen so did we get tax credits for it yet for films that come to town did we ever get tax credits to the legislature we do have tax credits yeah good because you know they, we had it for a while they took it away mm -hmm. and i didn't know if we ever got it back gotta have them you've got to have them everybody mm -hmm. else has got them you've got to have them yep it's 80 billion dollar business in georgia now and if we turn the Main Street downtown Little Rock into the, uh, what's it called, the Creative Corridor? Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah, the tech park, you know, for me, it seems like a very natural place for us to be around because so much of filmmaking is technical. And, you know, I, I've said this before, but the there's not just actors and, and directors on movies. There's depending on the size of the film, usually around 250 people that touch it. And a lot of those people make really good livings. Um, so it's, it's an industry and it's one of the, the only art industries that the only art, art forms that is also an industry. And I think it's tremendously important for economic development. Um, and, uh, also just to build up the the arts culture in the city is you know really the heart of the city well it's a whole nother industry yeah you're building a whole you're bringing a whole nother industry to to uh arkansas and it's like you said it's going to be statewide so what goes on up in bentonville and there's something different in bentonville yeah there's the bentonville film bentonville film festival and um is i we've you know acs has met with them several times we're very friendly and they want to host events down here with us and we want to host up events up there with them and um but it's a festival so it's it's a little bit different than what we're doing it's so it's not really com com competitive no no very complimentary to each other yes. what happened to the hot springs film festival it's still going strong it's doing really well so we've got the little rock film festival though you said is actually what you are left over from it's debunked yes. and you've yes. created this new cinema arkansas cinema society from yes. those people and then we've got the hot springs film festival we've got the bentonville film festival there's a film festival in el dorado also um but any f 
and there's the Kaleidoscope Festival that's actually happening next week um, in Little Rock. And that's a, a, a cool deal happening also. So we, are, we really want to partner and support yeah, you know, you need everything. Com- yeah, yes. there needs to be and a... Connect. A, and mm-hmm. there's, in my mind, there's not any uh, competition with any of these other festivals. Do you think... Right. It really should build off of each other. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and if all, all ships rise. That's right. And if you uh, kind of keep up with each other, you won't be in competition of picking the same dates. Right. That's and when you're in communication, then you're not overlapping. And yeah. So do you think theater and film are at all alike? Very similar, I think. I think very similar people get into both. So next week, our guest is from the Arkansas Children's um, Theater mm-hmm. at the Arkansas Art Center. Mm-hmm. Jeff and I both did, did plays at the art center, but he could sing. I couldn't, so I was like a log in, in some things and maybe a tree in one. Well, they I think I was a rock in one, a silent fairy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've risen up now. <laughs> Behind the camera. All right. So, uh, Catherine and Rhett, this is a question for both of you. We're dreaming big. That's all I really ever do. If you could dream as big as you could dream, what would your dreams be? You have to start with economic development, Rhett, first and go first. Jobs, jobs for everybody. Greatest social program ever created. I'd like to see Little Rock at the next level. I'd like to see uh, unified uh, leadership, business, civic, institutional, educational, be on the same agenda and, and want the same things, want big things for Little Rock, and work together to accomplish those goals. Wow, Catherine, I'm sorry you have to follow that. I know. So, Catherine, if you were going to dream as big <coughs> as you could dream, what would you dream? Um, well, for the ACS, uh, what I would dream is that we have a state-of-the-art theater in downtown Little Rock, um, the most comfortable seats in Arkansas, the biggest screen in Arkansas, the best sound in Arkansas, and would have monthly screenings much like they do at the Clinton School or they or even weekly weekly screenings with filmmakers um big filmmakers and we would become like ted talks and would be online and and people would be like what did you see that talk from the acs and um and we would have a bar restaurant adjacent to the theater and we would screen movies all weekend and it would be some place where people would come hang out and eat and go see a movie um and then I would also kind of a partnership dream is just to build the film industry in Arkansas so that my husband doesn't have to go out of town so much and we can both make movies in Arkansas and have Arkansas become known as a filmmaking hub, um, much like New Orleans or Atlanta. You know, I do feel like Little Rock and just all of Arkansas is right on the cusp. And there's a part of me that almost doesn't want anybody to know about us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I understand the economic development. I know we need the jobs and I know. I think you're not the only one. (laughs) But I don't want to sell out. You know what I mean? I don't Mm -hmm. want, I want to have every bit of that, but I want to do it in the right way that we Mm -hmm. don't sell ourselves out and just, you know, turn into. We're big enough where we've got all the amenities that a bigger city has, a great art center and a symphony and every, everything that we have, but we're still small enough that people can make a difference. Mm-hmm. I read you said that in the And Arkansas you can afford Center. to live here. And you can afford to live here. Is there anything you want to tell, Rhett, to our people about, um, to our listeners about how they can get involved in the downtown? I know you said earlier something about everybody can make a difference. I mean, is there something you want to say that everybody could make a difference? Join the Downtown Little Rock Partnership. Are you the president of that? I'm not. I have been. I'm on the board. Gabe Holmstrom is the executive director and uh, does a great job. He's, you know, he's put on the uh, the doggy parade and the, the alley parties on the weekends, and he, he's very creative. And so if they join, in fact, he's going to uh, collaborate with Catherine on some filming in the fall. If they do uh, the downtown partnership, does that money go to people like Catherine who are trying to do stuff? It really runs their programs and pays their staff. And then to run their program and pay their staff, what do they exactly do down there? Promote Little Rock? Promote pro- promote downtown, promote the businesses downtown, deal with issues like, like I-30, the homeless task force that just met and came up with a recommendation, 
things like that. So I'm having the mayor on in a couple of weeks, and someone asked me to ask him what he thinks we should do about the trash in downtown Little Rock. I mm. thought that was interesting, and it mostly comes from the homeless people just throwing their trash on the ground. I'm not sure. I, 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 haven't, I have to say I've not heard a lot of complaints about that. Panhandling, yes. Trash, no. I agree. I haven't either. Yeah. But he said he lives <coughs> close to somewhere where they sit in a parking lot and they just leave their trash everywhere. Hmm. And so I guess it's more his issue. Probably not. true in every city. Pro- oh, and I'm, mm. it's probably in his neighborhood it's more true. Uh, so if people want to uh, rent from you, how do they get in touch with you? At uh, Moses Tucker. Moses Tucker dot com or 376-6555. And I don't, you don't have all your condos listed on there, do All your properties yeah. listed. Yes, we do. You have every one of your properties listed on Moses Tucker dot com. Yes. All right, Catherine, how do we get buy tickets get involved with your exciting new arkansas cinema society we have a placeholder website that's arkansas cinema society.org our we're launching our uh real website next week we tickets are for sale on go com, and you can also go to our facebook page our twitter account and our instagram page and all of the information is on those as well and your and your website and your facebook is arkansas society arkansas cinema society.org and if you want to volunteer Mm -hmm. um email volunteer at arkansas cinema society.org and if you have a question you can email info at arkansas cinema society.org and we'll put all of that on the arkansas flag and banner uh website just click on radio show and you can go to this interview and you can see all of that information who's our guest next week tim uh, next week, you, you already hinted at it, Rivka Cooperman from oh, the right. Arkansas Children's Theater. Yeah. yeah. You should come back, That's a Catherine. good follow-up. It is a good follow-up. Where's my gift from my guest? Here it is. Hold on. All right. Flags. Oh. Well, imagine Surprise. that. Yeah. So this one is, Tim, who's that? That one is Pennsylvania. Who went to Pennsylvania? Catherine. That's the Arkansas flag, the U.S. flag, and the Pennsylvania All flag right. desk set for you. Hold on, Rhett. Where's the pirate flag? We yeah. have those. We have the just yeah. come by flag and banner. Because <laughs> you're a pirate erg. And this one is my favorite state flag. Tim's favorite state flag. Tell our listeners why that's your favorite state flag. Because it has like a Roman gladiator standing over a dead body and it says death to tyrants under it. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Who could argue with that? No. Can we switch? <laughs> <laughs> now, unless you want Virginia's flag. Those are your alma maters. Thanks, Carrie. You're Thank welcome. You. That's really fun. Uh, and to our listeners, if you have a great entrepreneurial story you would like to share, I would love to hear from you. Send a brief bio or your contact info to questions at upyourbusiness.org, and someone will be in touch. Thank you for spending time with me. If you think this program's been about you, you're right, but it's also been for me. Thank you for letting me fulfill my destiny. My hope today is that you've heard or learned something that's been inspiring or enlightening and that it, whatever it is, will help you up your business, your independence, or your life. I'm Carrie McCoy, and I'll see you next time on Up In Your Business. Until then, be brave and keep it up. You've been listening to Up In Your Business with Carrie McCoy. To hear the full interview, go to upyourbusiness.org, where you will find links to resources discussed on today's program. Carrie's goal to help you live the American dream.